And as crypto gets crushed and stocks swing wildly, is the Robinhood user still training? Let's go down to West Palm Beach, where our Kate Rooney is with Robinhood CEO Vlad Tenev for an exclusive interview. All right, thanks, Julia. Vlad, it's great to see you in person. You just got off stage. We're here at the Permissionless Conference, which is a crypto conference, and we'll get to some of the news you had out today, but it is good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to see you, too. Of course. Well, I want to start with the markets. Crypto is getting crushed. Stocks are down, and individual traders are just trading a lot less than they were, say, a year ago, for example. How are you looking to growth, and where are you looking for growth in the near term? What should shareholders know? If they're trying to be confident in investing in Robinhood, what do shareholders need to know about the future of the company? Well, from the very beginning, Kate, we started Robinhood with the idea that we should challenge the status quo. Brokerages were charging expensive commissions. They had account minimums. And Robinhood came in there and changed the entire business model. And you kind of see the same thing happening in crypto right now. You see uh, lots of companies charging customers high fees, it being kind of the realm of early adopters. And I think with, with this product in particular, we have we have the opportunity to do that again, to challenge the status quo and make something that was accessible to only a select few accessible to a much broader mass market audience. And that, get, that gets us very excited. And so the product you're announcing today essentially lets users hold their own cryptocurrency and NFTs. It really puts you in direct competition with Coinbase, for one, among other startups. But you're doing this no fee model that you just mentioned. How can Robinhood afford that? Are you subsidizing the fees? And what does the revenue look like here on the back end? Well, I think it's, uh, it, yeah, it's a question that's a couple of steps ahead. So our primary objective is to give customers a great product, right? To give them the opportunity to not just uh, trade through the centralized exchange of Robinhood, but also keep complete control and custody over their keys. And we'll help them access decentralized exchanges and swap coins. Um, the revenue model, once we, once we deliver a product that we think customers will really, really love, it looks really good, the revenue model takes care of itself. But our focus is on just making sure that, you know, this is the way for, for our customers to access Web3 and maintain self-custody going forward. And so your customers are going to plug into other exchanges. You mentioned in the release something about earning yield on stable coins, for example. There was a huge huge incident last week with Terra and Luna. That really collapsed. Are you worried at all about the liability for Robinhood? If you connect a customer to, say, a decentralized exchange that goes through a hack, how did you get your regulators comfortable with that? Well, the, the way we think about it is it, it's not unique to crypto. I mean, there's certainly lots of projects. Not all of them are going to succeed. But you have, you know, incidents like that happening in the traditional equities markets. You see it happening in currencies historically. And I think it can be tempting to be wrapped up in what's happening week by week. But you look at all the protocols that are popular today. Some of them have been really successful. You see the, the companies behind them or the, the DAOs at this conference. They were all largely built during crypto winter. So when everyone says, oh, crypto is is over, that was fun while it lasted. People put their heads down and, and they build and they build these great products. Um, and that's what we're excited to do. I think now is actually the best time to build. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.